In this session, we are going to talk about the NAT, which stands for Network Address Translation, and we are going to cover the topics like what is NAT and how NAT is helping with our IP exhaustion because we are having a very limited number of public IP addresses available. Third, we are going to take a look about the difference between the public IP address and the private IP address and how NAT is helping between those public and private IP addresses. Fourth, we are going to take a look on the types of NAT where we will be taking a look onto the static NAT, dynamic NAT and then PAT which stands for Port Address Translation. So there is a lot to cover in the, this uh, NAT topic. So let's begin with our first point that is what is NAT. All right, so let's talk about the NAT which stands for Network Address Translation and why it is so important to understand the networking either you are working on a cloud or on-premise data centers. Imagine a scenario that you have a device which is connected to internet and in this case I am considering it is a mobile and the mobile is having its own public IP address. And in the world, there is a possibility that there could be another devices which can be laptop with its unique IP address. And there could be iPad, there could be TV, which has its own IP addresses. I'm talking about the smart TV. So in the world, there could be a possibility that we have a billions of devices with its own unique IP addresses. But there is a very special thing about the IPv4 address. I'm not talking about IPv6, I'm specifically talking about IPv4, which was quite popular and still we are using it. So previously with the IPv4, there was only possibility of 4.3 billion public IP addresses. So in the world, we can have the public IP addresses, but there is a hard limit onto it. And considering the devices nowadays we are having in our household, and considering the population size, like we currently estimate that there are 7.9 billion uh, population on earth. So considering that equation, and if you consider that in each household, if you are having three, four, or at least five devices with public IP address, then we will consume all of these 4.3 billion IPs in the world. And that will result into the exhaustion of our 4.3 billion public IP addresses. And we are already facing that problem that we are really having a crunch of public IPv4 address available for us to consume. So how come network address translation is going to help us in solving this problem so that we are still having the public IP addresses available, but still we can increase the number of devices into our home as well as onto our private network. Here I'm just gonna take a very basic example of my home network to explain how the network tra address translation is going to help. So this is my home network and here I have my devices like my phone, my laptop, my iPad and my smart TV. And all of these devices are connected to my router which provides access to internet. So here in this example, if my router is having access to internet, then it will have its own public IP address. And along with having the public IP address, my devices will have all its own IP addresses. So here are some example of my IP addresses. And there is a difference between my router's IP address and my device's IP address. And the difference is there is a one public IP address and other are private IP addresses. So here the IP address which starts with 3.10.11.12, which is my public IP address for my router. And uh, this public IP address is responsible for my router to get an internet access so that all the devices which are present in my household can access the internet. All right, the second IP range which I'm talking about is the private IP address. And here you can see my iPhone, my MacBook, my iPad, my uh, like a smart TV, all of them are having a private IP addresses which are only visible within my home network and those IP addresses are not visible outside of my home network and the IP ranges are like 192, 168, 1.1 and second is 1.2 ending with uh, 2 at the end and there is a, a 1.3 and 1.4 my other devices. So all of these are possible with the help of network address translation. And what's benefit you are getting over here is that you are only having one public IP address with the router and rest of the IP addresses are local and those are not visible uh, to the outside world. 
So instead of having five public IP addresses, now we are reducing our public IP address count to only single public IP address which is assigned to my router and rest of the devices within my household or which is my private network can have the local IP address within only visible within my home network. And the same concept applies for any enterprise IT companies having their own data center or either they are having their own cloud account where they are running their services. So if they are having their own private data center or a physical data center, then they will have their own private network with their own private IPs assigned to those devices, which you can see over here. Just replace this home with their private data center and they will have thousands of devices present within their own private network and they will have their own private IP addresses. And same concept applies for any cloud service provider when you're trying to deploy your services on any cloud platform, then in that cloud platform, you will get your own private IP ranges within the VPCs. And those VPC private ranges are only visible within that VPC. And you will have a public IP address, uh, which is like a, quite a few, not more than 100 or 200. And then you will get your work done within your cloud environment as well. So this is how this network address translation works for your home network, for your physical data center, if company is running, and even if a company is trying to deploy their resources on a cloud environment. Now we know a little bit more about the NAT network address translation. Let's talk about the different types of a NAT which are available. So the first one is the static NAT and in which we have a single public IP address which is assigned to a single private IP address. So this single public IP address which you can see over the router which I have presented have access to internet. And then that single public IP address will be attached with our or connected with our private uh, device which can be a laptop with the private IP address. And that's how this uh, static NAT works but this the biggest limitation with the static NAT is that you will always need to assign one single public IP and one single private IP address you cannot have a more than one private address assigned to our static NAT so that's the biggest limitation which we always get with our static NAT the second type of NAT is the dynamic NAT and it is a bit more advanced than the previous static NAT so here what we have is that we have a dynamicity and in the dynamicity what we are having is that we are having a pool of public IP addresses. So whenever there is a need of our public IP address, so we are just going to fetch or it is just going to dynamically assign one random public IP from the pool to our device and then that public IP will be mapped to the private IP. So of course, we will have an advantage over a static net, but here we still have a pool of IP address. If we are going to consume those IP address, then again, we are running out of our public IP addresses. And again, there is always a mapping of the public IP address from a dynamic pool to a stat uh, not a static, but a private IP uh, assigned to our private devices. So of course it is advantageous over a static NAT, but still we will be hitting the limit of our public IP addresses when we are having a limited pool of IP addresses. And the third one, which is the most popular and used quite widely is the port address translation NAT. And this is a bit more advanced than the static and the dynamic NAT. And here we will use the advantages of ports in our networking. So let me show you how it works. So here you can see this is our private network where we have a devices like a mobile, laptop, iPad and our TV. And each device has its own private IP address. But the IP address over here is same. Only the difference is the port is different. So here you can see the mobile IP address is 192.168.1.1 but it is running on a port 8011 and similarly uh, on a laptop if it is running any kind of a service then it is uh, getting the port is 8012 but the IP range is same for all the four devices only the difference is the port is changing so here uh, on iPad it is 8014 and here on the TV it is 8013 so consider this as a data center where you have a more than 
like a thousands of devices running inside that data center or in a cloud virtual private cloud so there you can spin up these many devices and each device will have the private IP range uh, assigned to it along with the different ports. So that's the biggest difference which brings in the port address translation. All right, so now we have talked about the private IP and the ports. Let's talk about the public IP address. So here again, the public IP address will be a single public IP address which you can see 3.10.11.12 but there will be also a port mapping which will be translating our public IP address port to our private IP address port and for that we are just gonna use the address translation table. So here you can see on the left hand side uh, I have written down or I have prepared this table. This table will exist in the networking or in our Whole networking architecture where we will have a public IP address mapped to our local address which can be called as our private addresses and always keep in mind that this mapping uh, we will do along with our public IP address and port with our private IP address and port so here the public IP address is ending with uh, uh, 10.11.12 and the port is 8011 and here the private IP address is 192.168.1.18011 and similarly I have created a mapping for all of my devices. Now when someone is trying to access any services which is running on any of our devices then that person is going to access our public IP address along with the port and once they try to make a call to our service then our address translation table is going to be looked up and then it is going to search for the entry or the mapping between our public IP address with our private IP address and port and once that entry is found and then that request will be forwarded to our respective devices. So this is how in short this port address translation NAT works in the reality. But keep in mind that I have only explained to you the network address translation. I have not explained the DNS like how the domains are mapped to our DNS entries and how our domain requests are getting routed and then our uh, translation table is looked upon and how we are going to access our services that I will cover up into our DNS and uh, domain name server topic. So that is something I will cover in that particular session. But here the key thing is that network address translation is really important and so that you will have a leverage of using a single public IP address for hosting more than one, two or many services onto your cloud or on-premise data center and one of the biggest advantage which you will get uh, with the network address translation is that you will uh, like a safeguard your devices so here you can see uh, the end user or the public user is only able to access your public address but all of your private addresses are hidden behind uh, your networking so that's the one of the advantage you also get with a net of course it is not uh, like we have covered all the security aspect of it but at least there is a certain level of uh, security or protection you also get when you are using the net so see you into the next session of this networking till then take care and bye bye